Greetings once again, fellow Star Trek fans, and Happy New Year. I know there's not too many of us that are going to be sad to see 2020 gone. I hope your new year is going well. I've got another little Star Trek goodie to share with you. Now, recently I had showed you guys the, um, the Wand Company communicator <clears throat> from the lovely Star Trek original series. Well, today I want to show you the other great thing that the Wand Company produced in regards to Star Trek, and that is the hand phaser. Type 1 and Type 2 hand phasers. It's got the same kind of design that the communicator had, the box anyway. Now, you can, um, you can see the phaser on the front. This was released in 2014, so this one was first. Star Trek the original series. The communicator came out in 2016 and the communicator is a little more advanced and a little more, um, well, let's put it bluntly, realistic. The whole function of a communicator for Star Trek is so that each individual can communicate with each other as well as the ship. Now with the hand phaser well, let's go back to the communicator for a second. The function was communication. So when the, the WAN company came out with the communicator, it was paired with Bluetooth devices, so you're actually able to use it through your phone. Yes, hence communication device. Now the hand phaser, <clears throat> unfortunately, it's very unfortunate, <laughs> that this is not a functioning hand phaser, or maybe it is fortunate, depending on um, the way you look at it. This is basically has one function. It's a phaser, it's a universal remote control. It's still a great toy, but the, you get more use out of the communicator because you could use it for phone calls, you can use it for you know, listening to your music on your iPhone or your iPad or whatever phone device you have. But the communicator is basically, uh, excuse me, the phaser is basically made as a remote, a universal remote control, which is still an awesome function. Universal remote control, a phaser from the wand company. <clears throat> you can see the side of the box. It's pretty basic. The ends look very much like the communicator one did. The black box, I love the basic black box. You can see the back, it's got the things that uh, it does, the information, original series phaser remote control, fully functioning programmable infrared remote control. Now how cool is this? <clears throat> now they could have done the same thing, now in addition to It'd be nice if they did Star Trek The Next Generation, the hand phaser. I did a video a while ago where I showed you guys the remote control for the, um, the Next Generation hand phaser. That'd be cool if uh, the wine company would do one of those, but I'd prefer, if they're going to only do one, I'd rather have it the original series. Look how great that looks. The original series Star Trek phaser. Highly accurate, guided setup, you can go into FX mode, built-in rechargeable battery, advanced gesture recognition, any TV off mode. So, that being said, let's get it out of the box. So all the components are out of the box. You can see it's got a lovely case like the communicator did. It also has an instruction manual. And like I did last time, I will put up the, 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 um, the manual for you so you can follow along and you can pause it and you can read it for yourself. So let's put that aside and I'll show you guys the case. Very rugged construction, USS Enterprise NCC-1701 standard issue phaser. The authorizations and you can see the back 
This one is a little more hefty than the communicator was because the phaser is a lot heavier. So let's open up the box. What do we got? Look at that. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? You got the type one and the type two phasers. You got the hand grip. Um, you've got the base. USS Enterprise standard issue phaser. Um, you've got the uh, the charging cord, the USB cord, and again, just like the communicator, this can be charged by the computer in your USB port. Um, what else we got? We got looks like a little a small tube. We open it up, and it's actually the screwdriver to attach the hand grip to the unit. And then we have the phaser itself, the unit. This is the part that gets charged. It holds the battery as well as the electronics. So when you assemble, <clears throat> put that over there. Okay, so all the, the pieces were taken out of the case. And I can show them to you a little bit better. We got the base. And what it does is the, the phaser props up right against this base. And it's magnetized, so it stays in place. I showed you guys the screwdriver. Now the reason for the screwdriver is that there's a regular screw in the bottom of the handle grip. And in order to get it to stay attached to the main housing, you can see the screw. Let me show you the, where it goes into. So that's where the screw goes in. Let's take a look at this main carriage. You can see the beautiful phaser. That's where the infrared signal is going to come in. And the cone at the end is for FX mode. You can even take the uh, this off. Let me see if I can do it with one hand. And when you do, when you take it off, you can look inside and you can actually see the crystal that powers the hand phaser. So that's pretty cool. So let me go ahead, and I can't do it with one hand, so I'm going to put the handle grip on. And I'll show right, you guys. So I attach the handle grip. And when you put it on, I like to put it on first, fit it into place, and then gently um, screw, the, screw the end in. Now it's perfectly symmetrical, so you don't have to worry whether it's facing back, right, left, up, down. It's pretty self-explanatory. The screw goes in the hole underneath the main carriage, and you screw it in with the provided screwdriver. And the way this fits onto the base, you can see it's perfectly angled, and it's magnetic. And when you attach it, the magnets kick in, it sticks and stays in place, and it's beautiful for display. Now, when it comes to the, the USB charging cord, let me uh, set that up and I'll show you what that it looks in, like. Like the communicator, this one does not have the little cube. You can plug it into your computer if you want, because you can plug it into any USB power source. Let me see if I can do this with one hand. Plug it in. Whoop. See, I just wiped out a building by accident. Let's try that again. The whole reason I wanted to do it and plug it in because I wanted to show you guys what it did when it was charging. So when you first get it and you first plug it in, let me see if I can do this again with one hand. All right, so I got to do it this way. Um, basically, I just want you to hear what it says when you plug it in to charge. Power cell charging. Thank you, that's what it says. Now, I had already charged it earlier, because um, I wanted to, well, just play with it. <laughs> so you can see when you plug it in, it tells you that it's charging, and you can see the pulse. Now, this doesn't have an on-off switch. So you can see that there's a button on the bottom, and it coincides with the, uh, 
the top piece. Now, let's see, I believe this is the type one hand phaser. I like the type two better with the, the pistol grip, but the type one hand phaser basically fires Again, I don't want to go into anything before going through the modes with you guys. Like I said, there is no on-off switch, though. So, again, I'm doing it with one hand, so please be patient. So, I took it out of the, the charger. And in order to put it onto the cradle in the Type 2 phaser, you can see the little grooves. You put it in, nose first. And when you put it in, you make sure it clicks into place. And now you've got the Type 2 hand phaser. Now when you want to take the, um, the Type 1 phaser out to recharge, don't just yank it out because you will damage it. That's what this button is for. When you push the button, you can see that it releases. You pull it back ever so slightly and it comes right out. And to put it back, again, guide it in by the nose, and you push it, and it clicks into place. So, let's go into some of these fun features. Now, you'll see the top, you've got the little wheel, you roll it open, just like the real, the real thing. And when you pull the trigger, isn't that awesome? <laughs> God, I love this thing. And that's the sounds that it makes, the standard phaser sound. Now, when you want to change modes, there's, there's basically only two buttons on this. And everything is controlled from this piece, the Type 1 hand phaser. Now, when you want to program it, you practice you push it for practice mode you could push it again for control mode, control green, mode. Memory bank. and when it turns green you're ready for the TV or whatever you're going to use as a remote control when you press it again FX mode. that's my favorite that's effects mode that's where you get to play with it and I had taken a side piece off so you could see the dilithium crystal chamber how cool is that? Just a minute. This is so much fun. I tell you, when I play with this, it's like, do you guys remember? Well, if you're if you're my age, let's see. This coming February, I'm going to be 54, and I remember when I was a kid, I had gotten the AMT Star Trek. You know, it had the communicator, the tricorder, and the phaser, and I was just so happy with that. I loved it so much. This, playing with this, brings me back to that. Except, of course, this, is, this just blows that one away. In addition to the effects mode, you can see, it's got the dial on the back. Let's see, we're gonna, I think the way it's set right now is set for zero. Let's bring it over to one. And we'll pull the trigger. I think that's stun. Doesn't that sound like stun? Love it. All right, let's turn the dial to two. Got a different stun sound. I think it's stun. Turn it to three. That almost sounds like when they shoot the photon torpedoes. Well, the sound before, the ba -ba 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 that it makes. Love it. All right, let's go to number four. Oh, 
uh-oh, it goes on overload. That's awesome. So just remember guys, don't set it to number four because you'll put it on overload and you'll take out your house and the building and just all kinds of things. And I hope that doesn't constitute a copyright strike because you know how YouTube can be. All right, so let's move on to number five. Let's see what that does. It doesn't do anything. Let me make sure I got it clicked. Hmm, for some reason it doesn't do anything on number five. Let's go to six. The stun. Number seven. That wonderful phaser sound. Let's go to number eight. Another classic phaser sound. And back to nine. Another awesome phaser sound. And that's my favorite one. That's when it's the setting on mine anyway, or appears to be on zero. That's probably not how it works, but that's how I'm going to go with it. All right, guys, I'm very sorry to do this, but let's uh, show you guys. Sorry about that. I would never point a hand phaser at any of you guys. Again, see the dilithium chamber. Love it. You can see the um, that's where the uh, remote control signal comes, and it'll go to your television. Now this does have um, the on, the off functions. And one other thing that's pretty um, interesting about this is you can actually put it into lock mode to make sure nobody plays with your phaser when you're not around. And we'll go through the instructions and I'll show you guys. All right, so let's go through the manual. Phaser, universal remote control, instructions for use. And you got a nice picture of the hand phaser. Now, when I first saw this, I'm like, oh, something lights up on the carriage, but that's not, you know, near the heat disbursement fins. But that was just a reflection when I took the photo. But it does not have the base. So, let's open it up. And you got a nice depiction of the phaser. Beautiful photographs in these. You can see the heat dispersible, uh, excuse me, the heat dispersal fins. And a nice dial. So on the back, <clears throat> you've got this basic setup and the introduction. The 23rd Century Phaser, co-designed by Matt Jeffries and Gene Roddenberry, was standard issue aboard Starfleet vessels. Although primarily intended as defensive weapons, their power design and flexibility made them useful for heating rocks, cutting through armor plating, and even as a backup energy source capable of powering a small shuttlecraft into orbit in an emergency. Now we had seen that in the Galileo 7, which was Mr. Spock's first command, and they had drained the power, and they didn't have a backup source, so they used the hand phasers. The original series phaser universal remote control is not a toy. It is an advanced gesture-based universal remote control designed to control home entertainment equipment such as TVs, DVD players, Blu-ray players, and iPod docks. It uses infrared codes learned from conventional remote controls by the means of gestures rather than pressing buttons. 
A total of nine different gestures and four separate memory banks enable the phaser to learn up to 36 remote control functions. At the press of the trigger button, the phaser pulses and produces one of the nine different phaser firing sounds depending on the setting of the Type 2 phaser dial, and we had gone through that. And has the power to instantly stun almost any TV without setting up setup required. <laughs> Love it. And again, I'll, I um, put the video in high definition, so if you want to record, uh, excuse me, if you want to pause the video and read along, feel free to do so. It's got a lot more information. It doesn't have as much information as the communicator did because there are not as many functions in this as there was in the communication uh, communicator. It shows you operational modes. Nice graphic dia diagram. Practice mode. Control mode. Going over, we got programming the phaser. The button pressing guide is on the back. And you can see when you sync up or can program it, how you're supposed to use your remote control into the type one phaser. And like I said, it's got the lock function. I don't know if I had uh, told you guys about that. You can adjust the volume, the care instructions. The phaser is a sensitive instrument of control and should be handled with care. Clean only with a soft, damp cloth. Do not immerse in water. Do not insert anything into the aspirated grill opening. To protect the phaser while not in display, keep it safely in a shock absorbent transit case. You can see the, the button pressing guide. I had gone through the button sounds with you, or some of them anyway, through the dial. <clears throat> and this is 2004 release by the Wan Company. And this manual is not as long or extensive as the communicator one. So, let's go ahead and we'll play through the sounds again. I'm not going to program it for you um, because you need the remote control for your TV and to show you how to do it. I'm sure there are plenty of setup video tutorials from the Wan Company website itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the sounds again. Hang on a minute, I'm going to put the dilithium crystal chamber all right. Incidentally, like I told you guys, there's no on and off switch. So when you go to use it, the simple act of picking it up and touching the button on the bottom will activate it. And for it to go off, you just um, leave it alone. And I think after 20 seconds or 15 seconds, it actually stops working. So it turns itself on and off. For the Type 2 phaser, you can roll the, the wheel, bring that part up like in the original one or the real one. If you want to program it, push the button or the dial to the right. FX. It's in FX mode. You want to change it. Practice mode. You can put it into practice mode. Press it again. Control mode. Into control Green mode. Memory. Control mode, and this is where you can program it with new controls for your devices, or you can use it. Let's see. FX mode. And this is my favorite. <laughs> this is where you can play with it. FX mode. And let's see, it's on setting zero, so the basic sound. Love it. Rotate the dial. We'll put it to setting one. I love that. That's just so amazing. All right, let's go to setting two. Incidentally, guys, when I use mine, what I like to do is because I hate commercials, especially if I'm trying to watch Star Trek. So what I do is I switch it back to effects, uh, effects mode and then I shoot the commercials. <laughs> yeah, I gotta admit, I gotta be honest with you guys, I don't put it on stun either. I shoot to kill for commercials because I hate commercials. All right, let's go to three. You pull the trigger. 
And that sounds like the launching sound when they're launching something, whether it's a torpedo or it could be a probe. See? Picture her, launch probe. Probe launched, Captain. All right, so let's go to four. And that's overload. Oh no. Oh no, we put it on four. Remember, don't put it on four. That'd be very dangerous. Number five. And like I said, number five on mine doesn't do anything. When you pull the trigger, it just makes a click sound. So maybe you guys can tell me in a description what your phaser set to number five does. Let's put it to six. like stun. Number seven. And you can see the different colors. Going to number eight. Blue and red, that's beautiful. Number nine. It's more of a yellow. Red and yellow. And back to zero. What I perceive to be zero is my favorite setting and my favorite sound. So let's shoot the box. Then we'll shoot the case it came in. Then we'll shoot the manual. And we'll shoot the screwdriver. <laughs> we'll shoot the base. Um, no, we're not gonna shoot the Enterprise. Let's see, do I have anything that's Klingon around to shoot? No, I don't. <laughs> no Romulans, Klingons, Andorians. Ah, no one to shoot. Cardassians. All right, so that my friends, is the Universal Remote Control by the Wand Company. This is an amazing little toy. Imagine if we'd have had this when we were kids. In the 1970s, this probably would have cost $500 or actually more. And can you imagine showing this to your friends? When you pull out the AMT, the, um, the model kit phaser, that wasn't even full size, and you're making your sounds with your mouth going, pew, pew, shh. And someone pulls this out. <laughs> this is the closest thing to a functioning hand phaser. Maybe someday they'll have a real one. I love this thing. When you pull a trigger, it activates it. And then you can play with it. Or you can change modes to depending on what you want to do with it. So that, my friends, is the hand phaser. And just for the record, the one company is working on the tricorder, which would make it complete because you'd have the communicator, the type 1, type 2 hand phaser, and next would be the tricorder. And if you're interested in that, you can go to thewandcompany.com and you can actually sign up for when it's released. According to the website, it'll be in uh, the area of $250. Yeah, pretty expensive. But considering the durability um, and the functionality, I still don't know what it's going to do. The function of a tricorder is to gather information. So let's, uh, let's, I'm wondering what that's going to be like. So let's look forward to the tricorder. That's going to be amazing when that comes out. Where is the hand phaser and the communicator? I hope you guys enjoyed the videos. Really fun. These are amazing toys. And like I said in the last video, 
you know, we don't lose our toys. They just get more expensive as we grow up. <laughs> so that, my friends, is the hand type 1, type 2 hand phaser. I hope you guys have a happy new year. And once again, I'll see you guys very soon in another video.